Hi guys, welcome to this video on the respiratory system. We're going to be thinking a little bit about asthma in this video, what it is, uh, how it's caused by exercise in some cases, and what to do about it. Let's get started. So before we talk about what asthma actually is, it's worth noting that it's actually a very common condition. Um, and in the UK, we have about five and a half million people currently who are receiving treatment of some kind for their asthma. Um, it's slightly less common in adults than it is in children. Um, and then amongst children, it's slightly more common in boys than it is girls. Amongst adults, however, it's the other way around in that it's slightly more common amongst women than it is amongst men. Um, and also there are some, um, well, it does tend to run in families as well, but there are a bunch of different reasons for that. So what happens in asthma? Well, there's three main things that you need to know about um, that happen to cause asthma, that underlie um, being asthmatic. These three things are, first of all, that you may experience a, a tightening of the airways, a tightening of the muscles of the airways. They might become tight, they might become inflexible. So you'll remember from previous videos how we've talked about the smooth muscle that lines the airways, the trachea and so on. Uh, and the, the bronchioles and the bronchi are lined with smooth muscle uh, because they're tubes. Uh, that muscle potentially for an asthmatic um, becomes tight or inflexible at times. And that inflexibility inhibits that person's ability to take large gulps of air because it's not, it's not flexible enough to, to expand to meet the demand when we start to exercise. Um, this isn't purely related to exercise, but we'll come to that point in just a moment. Um, so muscles of the airway become tight and inflexible. Um, also, you may experience uh, swelling or inflammation of the lining of the airways. That's a, that's a second possible thing that happens with asthma. And thirdly and finally, you may also experience a, a degree of mucus or phlegm buildup. Uh, again, mostly in the airways that then restrict or reduce the, the size or the diameter of the passageways through which you're trying to breathe. So by constricting the, pa the, the, the diameter of the passageways, we are also restricting the amount of airflow that can come from um, outside into the lungs. So we've got these three things and this combination of three things. So that's what's happening, but, but what is the experience? So what is the effect? On, on the individual person if those things start to happen with them. Well, the first and most obvious thing is that we experience difficulty in breathing. So it just makes breathing hard. It, breathing becomes laboured and difficult and strenuous um, to the point where potentially you can get to the, the stage where you're really struggling for air. Um, so chest tightness is another feeling that you you might experience wheezing as well so when you breathe in and out there's almost a whistling sound that occurs that might be an indication for example that mucus buildup is happening um, and then also coughing so the body is trying to um, eject whatever is in the passageway it feels like there's something in the passageway that you're trying to eject and get rid of in order to clear it so that we can breathe more um, eff efficiently and effectively so chest tightness wheezing coughing these are all effects or symptoms of those things that we talked about just now um, in the in the top three bullet points. If these things um, get particularly bad, you may experience what's known as an asthma attack, an asthma attack. So an asthma attack essentially is if uh, the, the chest tightness, the wheezing, the coughing continues for a period of time and isn't helped by the usual means, which would be essentially your blue inhaler. And again, we'll come to the, the different inhalers in just a moment. OK, so what are the causes, the underlying causes of asthma? In this video, we're, we're going to focus particularly on what is called exercise induced asthma, um, because there are a whole bunch uh, of things that might affect or might cause your asthma to spark up or to, to kick in. Um, but because we're, we're looking at anatomy and physiology for sports science, we're going to focus in on exercise induced asthma. So those words simply mean asthma that's caused by doing some exercise. So your asthma kicks in because you're exercising. So there are two main groups of people 
that are affected by um, exercise induced asthma um, and the technical name for this is in fact bronchoconstriction bronchoconstriction so constriction the reduction in diameter of the airways bronco meaning the bronchus the bronchioles to do with the the passageways of the air uh, into the lungs bronchoconstriction there's two main groups of people that are affected by this first off and quite obviously people who already have asthma but also elite athletes so especially elite athletes um, that perform in sports that require a large volume of um, a large volume of oxygen essentially uh, so high intensity stuff uh, where breathing rate shoots up and also uh, longer distance aerobic activities so we're not talking about for example people who play darts or archers or that sort of thing um, so mostly team sports um, distance events and so on so those people are most at risk of experiencing exercise induced asthma and there are other factors um, that trigger or might cause those people to experience asthma during sport and they're fairly varied one is cold air uh, so if you're playing sport in the cold air often that can be a trigger for asthma for exercise induced asthma uh, playing or, or competing when the air is very dry can also do the same air pollution where there are uh, substantial numbers of particles of, of pollution in the air and also importantly certain chemicals like for example chlorine so it's it's relatively well documented that uh, swimmers um, are more likely to suffer from exercise induced asthma due to the fact that there is a, a fair bit of chlorine um, used in in maintaining the hygiene of swimming pools uh, so those are some of the other triggers that might cause your asthma to spark or to kick in if you already have asthma uh, and you're exercising and also if you're an elite athlete and you're you're exercising at a pretty high aerobic uh, intensity so what can be done then if you've got asthma or if you suffer from exercise induced asthma at times well there are, there are medical interventions and there are exercise interventions both of which are important so the medical interventions probably the, the ones that spring to mind the most obvious ones are to use an inhaler um, and you'll see on the screen the most common types of inhaler the blue ones and the brown ones basically the blue inhaler and you probably have seen if you don't have asthma yourself you've probably seen people use these kinds of inhalers um, in and around sport previously the blue ones are what are known as reliever reliever inhalers uh, and they predominantly contain a, a, a drug called salbutamol salbutamol there are others um, but salbutamol is um, used in a, in a blue inhaler a reliever inhaler and it's called a reliever inhaler because you take it whenever you need it so if you start to experience the, the symptoms of exercise induced asthma for example then you take your blue inhaler and they work by uh, causing the airways to widen so the muscles that, that, that um, smooth muscle through that runs throughout the lungs is relaxed when it comes into contact with that salbutamol um, it has a different name in the US I believe um, and it's taken in nebulized form so in the form of a spray or a fine mist um, you spray into your mouth and then you inhale it um, and it kicks in pretty quickly um, so really helpful if you are experiencing exercise induced asthma or if you're experiencing an asthma attack for example you would go for your blue inhaler um, the second type of inhaler the brown ones are called preventer inhalers um, uh, budesonide budesonide is the is the name of the the chemical that's mostly found in the brown inhalers uh, and these are for for taking over a period of time to, to um, reduce the inflammation um, that occurs over a period of time and they're, they're basically well, most commonly steroidal so they contain steroids um, and then they're, they're not to be used um, during an asthma attack or um, whilst you're experiencing asthma symptoms they're actually to be taken over a, sort of on a daily basis uh, to ensure that the um, the effects can have a kind of a, cu a cumulative impact to keep those airways open so the blue one is for short-term relief um, 
if you start to experience symptoms, whereas the brown one is a preventer. It's to be taken on a daily basis to keep the, the airways open and they have a kind of a cumulative effect. So you need to be taking it on a daily basis over a period of time before you really notice any major benefits of the of the preventer inhaler. In terms of um, exercise related things that you can do um, to minimize the impact of asthma, um, exercise is really helpful. Um, any kind of exercise, basically any kind of exercise that helps to strengthen respiratory muscles. Um, so that gives us a fairly broad range of activities that we could be talking about here. Um, and we're really just limiting sports and activities that don't require us to elevate our respiratory rate. So when we're elevating our respiratory rate, we are calling on our respiratory muscles, the intercostal muscles and the diaphragm to work harder. And just like any muscle, when we ask our muscles to work harder, they adapt and, and over time get stronger and more efficient. That's what we want to achieve with our respiratory muscles because that's going to have a beneficial impact on our likelihood of having um, these negative impacts from our asthma. So it won't solve the issue of asthma, but it will give you a better chance of offsetting the risks, um, especially when you start to exercise. If you're exercising regularly, strengthening those respiratory muscles, again, intercostal muscles that are between the ribs, the diaphragm, those muscles being nice and strong are going to help you when you get to the situation where you're exercising, for example, in dry air or cold air. Um, you're going to have a better chance of maintaining nice open airways. So minimizing asthma's impact, you've got the medical interventions with the inhalers, but you've also got to remember that exercise is very helpful. So if you can do more exercise, that's going to improve um, the strength of your respiratory muscles, which means you're going to be less likely to suffer from the severe impacts of your asthma. It doesn't cure your asthma, but you're less likely to suffer from the severe impacts of that asthma. That's it for this video. I hope that's been useful. Um, leave some comments below. If, uh, if you've got any questions, please ask them. Uh, otherwise, uh, don't forget to subscribe and, uh, and like the video and I'll see you in the next one. Take care for now.